Should we stay in Canada though? Yeah, I thought we would just springboard a little to the right. Yeah, okay, let's go over to let's go over to Calgary. This is an interesting one. That is an interesting one, actually. Coming off a, a really, really rough year. I mean, there's just been so much turmoil in Calgary that's obviously been well documented. <laughs> the, the finally, finally coming to a bit of a point where Sutter, GM, one's gotta go, both go. Yeah, like yeah, they lose their 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 number one goal scorer from last year. Ouch. It's the definition of like implosion and yeah. in the worst way. Cause yeah. like that, we've seen teams implode from a coaching level, from mm-hmm. a player level. Mm-hmm. I don't think we've ever seen a team implode from a managerial level quite like this. From, yeah, yeah, just from both. Yeah. Complete lack of structure totally. on both ends. No one knows what they're doing. And in the end, everyone leaves. Mass yeah. exodus. Max, mass exodus. I mean, yeah. I mean, within two years, you've lost Kachuk, Goudreau. And Tyler Toffoli, that's not what you like to see. I And I mean, like, I'm pretty young. I don't have all my hockey history brushed up. I'm no Jeff Merrick by any means. Sure. But I can't recall an offseason where a team called in every player personally to speak about the coach. Right. And it led to him being canned so fast. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Besides, Dude, it's so crazy. Besides Michael Grabcock. Oh, I mean Babcock. <laughs> I mean, check out your uh, wife's tits when you're not looking. I mean, yeah. What? Yeah. You know what? Though, though, I'm I'm gonna be honest. I think this team's better this year. I think so too. I I, I, I 100% have the, to agree. The loss of Sutter is a way bigger impact than losing to Foley. You know what I mean? Yep. And I was gonna say the swing back from losing Sutter is probably gonna be such a refreshing mood. Yeah. For most of these guys. Yeah. The, the funny thing is that guys that suck at hockey but want to play hockey really bad mm-hmm. will always play better than the guys that are really good but don't want to be there. Right, 100%. I, like, as someone who manages even a small-level ball hockey team, I can sure. tell you some of my middle six forwards that love just being there every day and get there an hour early, they always do better than the guys that show up five minutes before and are phoning it in. And, you know, but are sick. They're yeah. super sick. They yeah. undress guys left, right, and center and go bar but, like... Not helpful. It's not helpful half the time because you don't give a shit and you're not back checking. So yeah. we lost. Like, you know? Not to mention, I mean, people forget two years ago, Jonathan Huberto, well over 100 points. Oh, yeah. Maybe he's not playing with Barkov, but Lindholm's not bad. That was the biggest point production fall off in NHL history. I think it's damn near impossible that he doesn't have at least a bit of a bounce back. Yeah. Oh, I think Lindholm is a certified 1C. Like, let's not get that crossed up. Yeah. No, like, no. He needs, I, I do too. He's not Barkov, but he's a 1C. Yeah. Uh, he needs more respect on his name. He is for sure not anything I would scoff at as a first line. He is mm-hmm. very, very responsible. Mm-hmm. But what I found was really interesting was the quote that came out today. Okay. I don't know if you saw it. Huberto went on record as saying that last year was the first year in his NHL, in his whole playing career, that he went to the arena with no passion. Right. He lost all passion for the game playing for that man. It's the Sutter effect, baby. That's insane. He'll be back. He'll be back. He'll be back. He'll be back in a big way, honestly. I think so. I have them finishing just just outside of the playoff picture, but they're going to be in it right till the end. I have them at 91 points. That's good for, what, fifth Fifth in in the Pacific? Uh, Yeah. Yeah, about that. I got them uh, sitting sixth at 76 points. I'm a little disrespectful on that one, but... (laughs) I mean, like, I'll be honest, (laughs) a a lot of this team is players I, A, don't like or have grown a distaste for in the last few years, either from their playing style or just their performance in general. Right. You got Blake Coleman eating up $5 million on the fourth line. Yeah. You got Sharon Govich, who couldn't crack a Devils roster last year. I I think Sharon Govich will have a good year. He better because he's very, very quickly becoming the next Pugliarvi. He, that's he, no, that's a reach. He like he may not be quite as hyped as Pulyarvi, but like reach. nah, this man's teetering on the edge of obscurity. No. No. Uh, no. Mark my words. No. If he doesn't have a big year this year, he's gonna not be in the league, probably in two. Okay. Okay. Like his his performance has been lackluster. Mm-hmm. He doesn't show up enough, and more often than not, it's a compete level issue, not a raw skill issue. Fair enough. 